Hello, my name is Jonas Weber. I am the game designer of Expeditions Conquistador. In this video I'd like to talk you through one of our battles, just to demonstrate how combat in our game might unfold. I've chosen one of the early fights in the game to begin with. It's a cult using some old ruins in the center of the island as a ritual site. And you've been sent here to investigate them. And there are several ways out of this encounter, but I have chosen one of the more violent solutions because I feel like a bit of a bastard today. So as you can see, I have a party of six here that I've brought with, my, with me into the fight. I have three soldiers, I have two hunters and one doctor. The doctor is of course the healer, whereas the hunter are the ranged class and the soldiers are the melee class. Before the fight begins, I have an opportunity now to use any of my items that can be placed on the ground. We have a certain category of items called traps and barricades and I have taken the liberty of purchasing four barricades and three spike traps to aid me in this fight. I'm gonna start by placing a couple of barricades here and I'll put one here. As you can see, there is a radius around my own units where I can place this. In this case, uh, the radius covers pretty much the entire battlefield because I start somewhere in the middle. If I had approached this fight from, from a different way, I might have started somewhere over here. It might even have been night, which would have uh, given everyone penalties to range the attacks. But uh, since I bring a couple of good hunters in here, I've decided that attacking during the daylight might be for the best. I'm gonna put down some spike traps here, and that should be it for now. Let's get this party started. I'm the one who moves first in this fight, so I'm going to open with a volley. Which is really just to say I'm going to shoot people in the face with both of my ranged characters. There we go. I don't really want to move my soldiers outside of this nice little fortress that I've made for myself. So instead I'm going to go ahead and switch to ranged and see if they can't hit. The ranged attack accuracy for this guy is 26%, which is substantially lower than what the hunters had. But let's see. Nope, it's a miss. Perhaps the second guy will be more fortunate. Yes. It was a hit and their first character is down. Nobody's injured yet, so there's no reason to bring my doctor into this, but perhaps I should move a soldier up here just to cover this flank. All right, over to the AI. Come on. Yep, there's my first trap. And he still has enough of his turn left to make an attack, though it is not very effective. His ranged unit misses. This guy pops out from cover and hurries back. Ah, oh, that was unfortunate. One step more forward and then I would have had him. Oh, that's not too bad though. I'll just start by... Uh, yeah, I better show you here. So each of my characters have a set of abilities. Here I can switch between melee and ranged weapons. And then these are their character abilities. As you'll note, all of my characters only have one ability each. That's because I've brought a very inexperienced party into this fight. None of them have been promoted yet, so they're all recruits. As I promote characters, I will unlock further abilities, which I hope to show you in the ne next fight. So to begin with, I want to use Restore to give Guillermo Pascal here a bit of his health back. There we go, he's actually up to full health from that. The more... The higher rank a doctor is, the more health they will restore. Okay. In fact... Yes. I think I'm going to venture forth with Guillermo here and position him so that I can get a flanking attack with this other soldier of mine, Miguel. As you may have been able to derive from that, flanking attacks deal quite a bit of extra damage because it completely ignores the learned defense or the defense of an enemy or a unit, which means only their armor counts when you attack them. It's quite powerful. And uh, unfortunately, I can't make it all the way back with him, but if I move, 
Alejandro here a little out of the way, then yes. We'll get Guillermo back where he started. Good maneuver, if I may say so myself. Okay, so Rafael here will just make a ranged attack at their Trevor, and that worked fine. And then I'll move forth with Bernardo and see what he can do. Quite a nice amount of damage. And now, of course, if a ranged unit attacks someone with a ranged unit, with a ranged weapon, while an enemy is standing next to them, then that enemy gets to inflict one free attack of them, called Attack of Opportunity. If you hover over a character, you will see whether they have their Attack of Opportunity left or whether they've already spent it, as they only have one free attack every turn. You also get a, an Attack of Opportunity on an any enemy unit that's moving out of your melee range, which means if you try to disengage an enemy, you'll have to use a tactical move down here, which means you can't also attack in that round. You don't have to worry about that now, you'll you'll get the hang of it when you try the game for yourself. I'm gonna take a shot at their shaman with my hunter, because if I don't get him out of the game, then he'll just be able to heal up the enemy units, and that would be a waste of everyone's time. Good thing my soldier's so well armored, as that wasn't a lot of damage. See, what you saw there was that my soldier got a free attack on this trapper because he fired at melee range. That was really all that he could do since I'm kind of blocking him in. Alright, let's finish him off first. There we go. And... Yes, I might as well just heal Guillermo again. Let's see if we can't hit this shaman this time. Alejandro, do your worst. Yes, that's more like it. Uh, 71%. The further the enemy is away from your ranged unit, the harder it is to hit. But 71%, uh, I fancy my chances. Well, too much faith in the probability math, I guess. Fortunately, the shaman is within melee range of Guillermo, so I can actually move up on him and get to attack him in this turn, which is nice. There we go. That was a good, powerful attack. Uh, same can be said for Miguel, so I'll just move him up and then... Well, he's only got a 28% chance of hitting at range, but let's see. It was worth a shot. I'll just put him back into melee. Alright. Before I end my turn, I think I will put Bernardo all the way up to their trapper, so that if that trapper tries to attack again, I'll at least get a free attack on him. And that's it for me this turn. Yeah, there we go, there's that attack of opportunity. Alright. I think I better get some flanking going here. If I move behind the shaman with Guillermo, then I can put Miguel right on the other side of him, which will almost certainly kill him. There we go. And then perhaps Miguel can return the favor by positioning himself on the opposite side of that trapper so that uh, Guillermo can get an attack of opportunity. Or uh, a flanking strike, I'm sorry. Alright. There we go. Oh, come on, Raphael. You let me down, that's what you do. Alright. I think I better go right ahead and heal up Bernardo here. That's good. And then... Teresa has one more move, which I can use to arrange a flanking strike on their trapper. Yeah, I'll definitely be able to finish him off next turn. Yep, there's one of them. Let's see what the other one does. Yeah, and that's it. Thanks for watching so far. Let me just uh, load up the next battle and uh, we'll see what happens a bit further into the game.